Please welcome to the stage Chair of the Global Ties U.S. Board of Directors and Divisional Vice President of World Learning, Patricia Harrison. Hello, and welcome to this plenary luncheon, Raising Global Voices. I'm Patricia Harrison, Divisional Vice President of Professional Exchanges at World Learning and the current board chair at Global Ties US. Thank you. This plenary gives us the opportunity to reflect on the way that the Global Ties Network raises the voices of international alumni, especially when discussing their impact on their communities once they return home. We will honor and recognize the winner of the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. This year, we wanted to focus on alumni from the East Asia Pacific, and we are honored that our winner has traveled from Beijing to be with us today. We will also hear from our colleagues at the U.S. Department of State on how the network helps to advance U.S. foreign policy goals through exchanges and alumni engagement. This national meeting is about finding ways to raise our voices and that includes calling attention to the stories and data that convincingly make a case for the importance of our work. We're happy to have with us Sandy Jacobs from the Office of International Visitors and Sarah Gentry from Meridian International Center to share with us more information about the IVLP Impact Awards, which you can also read more about via the QR codes on your table. Last year, Global Ties US launched its own international alumni program to continue year-round relationship building and to ensure they continue to stay close to the State Department and to all of you in the network. I'm thrilled to welcome two of the honorary committee members for that program who are also part of the selection committee for the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. They are Ricardo Vanella of Argentina and Jalal Nasser of Bahrain. Ricardo and Jalal, please stand and let us welcome you. So glad to see you back. Unfortunately, Vicente Lopez Imbor Mayor, the sponsor of the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change, and the Honorary Committee Chair for the International Alumni Program, could not join us in person, but he will share a video greeting. Vicente is himself an IVLP alumnus and serves as honorary president of Via Circulo Jefferson in Spain. Thanks to his generous sponsorship, Global Ties US recognizes IVLP alumni who are making an impact locally and globally each year at the national meeting. Before we get into the awards, we're lucky to hear from someone who knows the power of exchanges in building the critical relationships we need to advance US foreign policy. Assistant Secretary for South and Central Asia, Donald Liu. A career member of the Senior Foreign Service with more than 30 years of service, Assistant Secretary Liu previously served as the U.S. Ambassador to the Kyrgyz Republic from 2018 to 2021, and the U.S. Ambassador to the Republic of Albania from 2015 to 2018. Before that, he worked on the Ebola crisis in West Africa as the Deputy Coordinator for Ebola Response in the Department of State, and as Deputy Chief of Mission in India. A U.S. Exchange alum himself, he was a Peace Corps volunteer in Sierra Leone, West Africa, from 1988 to 1990. A native Californian, he is from Huntington Beach, just 36 miles from his hometown's nearest CBM, International Citizen Diplomacy, Los Angeles. Please welcome to the stage Assistant Secretary Donald Liu. Good afternoon, everyone. Who here can remember the first time you went overseas? Anyone? Uh, I, I was thinking back to the first time I went overseas. Um, as Dr. Harrison said, I was a Peace Corps volunteer. I hadn't traveled before that. I, my family didn't have any money, and so the first thing I did when I left university was to join the Peace Corps and see the world. But I, I have this really intense memory 
of getting off that plane in Sierra Leone, West Africa, and being hit by this wall of heat and humidity, right? You've, you've felt that, many of you, in traveling around the world. I can remember um, crossing the lagoon from where the airport sits to where the capital is in Sierra Leone by ferry, and the, them blaring on the loudspeakers West African pop music. I, I just have these very strong images of those first hours and days. Um, I, I can remember trying new foods, trying to speak a little West African Creole, and, and meeting lots and lots of people. But most of what I remember from those first days and weeks in Sierra Leone are my host family and the people who took me around to show me this new world that I was stepping into. And I know that for thousands of IBLPs, that person, that guide, is all of you and the volunteers that you represent. So let me start by saying just a huge thank you on behalf of all of us for the work that you do. So I know that our IVLP visitors that go to visit you and all the volunteers you represent are treated like family. And how do we know that? We know that because they come back to our embassies and they give us a very full report. And they very seldomly talk about the policy stuff. They talk about the baseball games that you took them to. They talk about the weird foods that you ex expose them to. Uh, deep fried Snickers bars comes to mind. And they talk about learning that Americans are not at all like they seem in the movies. That in fact, we Americans, we're as screwed up as everyone else all around the world. And that's one of the things I really wanted to implore you today, as you continue to host IVLP visitors around the world, that you try not to show them a perfect and curated America, what is Wonderful about Americans is our openness and honesty, including about the faults in our culture and the flaws that we all know are very much about our society. Uh, I love when people come back from these trips and they get to talk about seeing the real America. Thank you for showing them the real America. Uh, Secretary of State uh, Tony Blinken calls this speaking with confidence and humility. So I want to say a word about how we select the people that come and visit you for three weeks. It's actually quite a rigorous process overseas. Uh, I have uh, been an ambassador a few times, but I've also been a deputy chief of mission, the deputy ambassador, and in every place around the world, our deputy ambassador chairs a process within an embassy where different staff, senior staff of an embassy, come together and they all have proposals. It's like you know jockeying for seats in a, a very competitive, uh, ball, that there are only limited number of seats, and we all come with these people that we're trying to advocate for. Who do we select? We really try to select people who are young, and we define young as being much younger than I am, under 35. We try to pick people who haven't been to the United States before, and we try to pick people who we think would benefit from meeting Americans, but also meeting other people from around the world uh, to share a common interest in whatever the topic is that they're going to be presenting. Um, we, we really strive, and I hope you see this, for gender equality. This is hard in many of the countries that we work in, but I hope you're seeing over time we do better and better every year in getting more women and people from different walks of life into this incredibly valuable program. I, I think we do a pretty amazing job identifying future leaders people who will change their countries in big ways and in small ways. And I want to give you a couple of examples from the places that I've served. When I was in Albania, we worked really hard to come up with a great list, and if you've been to Albania, there is no country that loves America more. But we identified a young academic named Ervin Mete. Ervin Mete went on a trip to the United States 2021 to understand public-private partnerships and their role in restructuring economies. 
Young Ervin is now Minister of Finance. And Ervin is taking what he learned in that three weeks about public-private partnerships and putting it to work in trying to reshape the economy he is responsible for. But more valuable than what he learned in the discussions are all the people he met along the way. These other fellow IVLPs and Americans he met really are the sounding board that Ervin uses to bounce his crazy ideas off about how to reform this very complicated economy. When I was in Central Asia, um, uh, one of our embassies there in Tajikistan nominated Munira Akilova uh, for an IVLP. She founded a textile and embroidery workshop that works in a very poor, very remote corner of northern Tajikistan. So um, Munira went on this IVLP, which was focused on adventure tourism, which sounds like an awesome IVLP. Um, that, that was in 2022, and we took her to exotic places like Traverse City, where she got, <laughs> here, applause for Traverse City. She got to see how we integrate tourism with um, handicraft marketing to, to figure out why people are gonna be buying stuff while they're on vacation. And she went back home to Tajikistan, and she has been mentoring many, many young women in her community, both on the art of embroidery and making handicrafts for their community and for export, but also how to think about taking that knowledge and actually turning it into jobs. And through her work, she has not only uh, helped develop livelihoods for all of these women that she has touched, she's also uh, supporting their extended families throughout northern Tajikistan. We look, all of us together, for ways to develop skills of this next generation of leaders around the world. We also, in doing so, hope that we develop in them a lifelong interest in learning about us as Americans and about the ideas that we expose them to. We recently in the State Department hosted a group of young people from South Asia and Central Asia, the part of the world I work on, um, and while we were having a discussion about some of the political things going on in their own home countries, um, we could hear the distant um, protests that were happening outside of the State Department. And if you've driven by the State Department, there are a lot of protests going on these days. When our guests exited the building, they found that in fact, um, a group of pro-Palestinian protesters were blocking traffic, they were uh, sitting in the middle of the road, and they were offering nonviolent um, protests over the administration's policy in the Middle East. Um, in the countries that these young people came from, this act of defiance would be met by police violence. It would be a sure thing to land those protesters in jail for a very long time. And one of the things we were able to illustrate by having them in Washington in our offices is how our society deals with peaceful protest. That's not anything we could ever explain in a textbook, in a media article, in a video call. That's something you have to see in real life. And I hope, like these young people who came to the State Department, you are showing them in your communities real things about American life that might or might not be transferable to what they're doing in their home countries. If you'll allow me, I'm gonna end where I began. Uh, after leaving the Peace Corps, I developed a lifelong passion for traveling around the world. Actually, it's really weird for me to live in the United States. It feels like a very foreign culture. I don't know if that's true for any of the rest of you. Um, I have loved, over my career, learning about other parts of the world, but I also carry with me what I feel like is a really deep understanding of that first experience I had traveling abroad. I feel like I understand West Africa in a very profound way. That in particular, I understand Sierra Leoneans, the good parts and the not so good parts, but I have a, a true picture of who they are and an affection for them that will last my whole life. I hope that all of you and the people that volunteer in your organizations have the very same effect on your IVLP visitors. And I hope those visitors rub off on all of us. Thank you very much for your time and all that you do.
And now, please welcome to the stage Deputy Director of the Office of International Visitors at the U.S. Department of State, Sandra Jacobs, and the Director of IVLP Collaborative Services at the Meridian International Center, Sarah Gentry. Good afternoon. My name is Sandy Jacobs, and I'm one of two deputy directors in the Office of International Visitors. It's such an honor to be with you today at my first national meeting. It's truly an extraordinary feeling to be in this room full of so many dedicated citizen diplomats, knowing that we all share the same belief in the transformational nature of people-to-people -people exchange. Thank you for the warm welcome today, and especially thank you to Ambassador, or Assistant Secretary Don Liu for taking the time to share the policy perspective from the Department of State's senior leadership. For 84 years, young leaders and professionals from every corner of the globe have come to the United States through the IVLP. When they return home, staff at our U.S. missions abroad hear tales of warm hospitality, from members of our exceptional Global Ties Network, and if the stars are aligned, embassy staff collaborate on an idea generated from an engagement or an encounter during the IVLP experience. On the flip side, Global Ties members in Kansas City, Sacramento, or Santa Fe might stay in touch with an individual IVLP member with whom they made a close connection during their brief encounter. But for most of you, there was no way to know if the spark that developed during an encounter in your city turned into something meaningful for the IVLP alum back home. And then along came COVID. We can all agree that the last few years have been a difficult time for everyone in the IVLP ecosystem. But for alumni engagement, there was a silver lining. The move to a virtual environment provided an opportunity for innovative programming. Many of us here also connected with exchange alumni in new and creative ways. We got, make sure, there we go. Uh, building upon best practices developed by our colleagues in the Office of Alumni Affairs, the IVLP Impact Awards Initiative was another positive innovation of the pandemic. It has since evolved into a direct connection between IVLP engagements in the United States and the follow-on activities of IVLP alumni after they return home. In the last two years, almost 500 exchange alumni have implemented IVLP impact awards in their home communities, promoting innovative solutions to shared challenges on the full range of priorities noted in our national security strategy. For example, Nigerian politician Rahmat Abisola Abdullahi returned home after her IVLP focused on women in politics and civil society, inspired to champion the rights of women and girls across her country. Through the IVLP Impact Awards, she launched a wide-ranging grassroots campaign to address barriers to gender and educational equity in Nigeria that included targeted research, training for local activists, and more. At, recent event, at a recent event, Nigerian Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas, voiced his support for the initiative and announced commitments to increase women's participation in governance and policymaking. It's incredible to consider that this IVLP Impact Awards project is already opening doors for women and girls across Nigeria. Beyond implementation of grants in their home countries, IVLP Impact Award grantees also engaged in a full year of virtual leadership development through a range of thematic, regional, and professional opportunities. Through these sessions, they received valuable guidance on building capacity of their organizations, developed presentation skills, and shared stories with fellow grantees around the world who are working on similar issues 
as well as with many of you, on the impact of their work at home. Only a few weeks ago, IVLP alumni from 36 countries and interested partners from across the United States tuned in to a public IVLP Impact Awards webinar highlighting Ukrainian and Bulgarian IVLP Impact awardees who implemented projects on mental health support, combating disinformation, and even photojournalism in direct support of Ukrainian communities. The event helped raise the profile of more than 20 IVLP Impact Award projects that have focused on supporting um, Ukraine since the full-scale invasion in February 2022, sending a clear signal that the United States stands firmly with the people of Ukraine. Thanks to Meridian's outstanding support of this program, Details of the impact from IVLP alumni projects on critical foreign policy issues and our shared goal of improving local communities now flows systematically to policymakers at the department, staff at all of the national programming agencies, our community-based members, and U.S. missions abroad, closing that important feedback loop that I mentioned at the start. We can now identify in real time Suggestions for IVLP alumni engagement when a senior U.S. official travels to the field. We can also catalog a range of examples of both policy and people-to-people -people impact, work that is started by you, our CBMs, across the United States and continued by IVLP exchange alumni once they arrive home. So not only does this initiative empower IVLP alumni to make a real difference in their communities, it also demonstrates the value of IVLP and exchange programs like it to the advancement of U.S. foreign policy makers, or U.S. foreign policy to key decision makers here in Washington. March 1st marked the start of the third round of the IVLP Impact Awards application cycle, and what started as an experiment has evolved into a meaningful tool to deepen engagement and direct connections that further demonstrate the value of IVLP. Thanks everyone, and now over to Meridian Sarah Gentry for a bit more on this. Thank you, Sandy. Um, for all of us who have had the privilege of working directly with IVLP participants and professional resources, you likely have seen the exact moment when a new idea is formed or heard about it maybe on the bus after a meeting when a participant shares, this is just the type of program my community needs. Or maybe at a closing session, a participant shares, I would like to share the knowledge and inspiration I have gained through IVLP. This is just what Taskeen Ali said after her IVLP experience in Huntsville, Alabama. Now she's an IVLP Impact Awardee. As an IVLP Impact Awardee, Ms. Tuskeen inspires and showcases the contributions of girls and women while promoting more diverse and inclusive science and technology fields. The projects and opportunities created by the IVLP Impact Awards directly demonstrate, extend, and expand the reach of IVLP. Importantly, they also give us the opportunity to share the program's lasting impacts with IVLP partners and professional resources. Recently, we were able to share with a DC resource the profound impact her work has had on IVLP participant Kudakwashi Maria Shisvo. Ms. Shisvo's IVLP Impact Award project on combating unconscious bias in Zimbabwe traces directly back to her IVLP exchange and specifically to her participation in Dr. Ismail's inspiring workshop. By providing funding and programming, the IVLP Impact Awards supports alumni to actualize ideas sparked by conversations and interactions like this that you arrange daily with your IVLP participants and professional resources. Ultimately, this 
initiative amplifies IVLP impacts for communities around the world to address many of the most pressing challenges of our time. We invite you to please check out our website, IVLP Impact Award, where IVLP Impact Awards project profiles and IVLP alumni stories um, share their stories about cities, meetings, and activities that inspired their community impact projects. You can access the website and a database, which is searchable by US City, to find impact awardees who engaged with your communities um, using a QR code on your table. Please spread the word to at least one IVLP participant you've met in the last year. Please tell them about the 2024 IVLP Impact Awards application, an opportunity that's open now until April 1st. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, hello, uh, Catherine Brown, uh, members of the board, uh, very good friends of the Advisory Council, Distinguished personalities, members of the Department of State, ambassadors, uh, members of our community, participants of this edition of annual uh, Global Ties Congress. Uh, as you can imagine, I am I'm very sorry, I deeply regret not being able to join you in person on this edition due to professional obligations in my country, in, in Madrid. Uh, but I'm so happy to know that our awardee of this edition, Mr. Ku, Zen King Ku, uh, has been able finally to travel to Washington. We welcome today an extraordinary journalist with outstanding values. That's the purpose of our award. It's someone who is excellent in their contribution and uh, in his professional activity, and someone that combines this with courage, with excellence, with commitment, with a clear engagement, with the and providing impacts in their communities, in his community, and through that projects this impact to the global to the global community, and that's the reason why we recognize today this prize. Uh, thank you so much, uh, also to our jury, to all and each of the members of our jury, and to the global uh, ties staff. They always uh, prepare a fantastic package of information, and we have an excellent. And, and, and very uh, dense, I would say, uh, discussions before deciding who is going to be the winner of each edition. Uh, I would like to underline one, once again two ideas, uh, very briefly. The first is the connection between local action and global impact. That is one of the reasons why we have created this leadership prize with social innovation, social innovation effects and roots. And the other one, it's the importance in this edition of the work that the journalists are doing all over the world. The journalists have the mission to defend and to protect the freedom of expression as one of the most fundamental constitutional values in any and each democratic society. Today, unfortunately, these values and these missions are threatened for a bunch of circumstances all over the world. And in the case of Mr. Q, he has demonstrated not only capacity, not only knowledge, uh, but, but also courage. And uh, I, on, on behalf of all the members of the jury, I very much like to recognize and to thank and to express our gratitude to their example. So thanks so much uh, to you and congratulations. Congratulations again to Global Ties. Congratulations, Catherine. You should be very proud of the organization that you have behind and besides you. And uh, very, very sad not to be with, uh, with all my very good friends in this edition, but I, from my heart, are there. Uh, so hoping that you will, you will have a very fruitful exchange and sessions and, and discussions. And looking forward to meet you again very, very soon. Bye bye. And now. Please welcome to the stage the recipient of the 2024 Global Ties U.S. IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change, Jung Ching Chu.
okay, I heard someone laughing. Uh, you may often see this gesture in China Kung Fu movies. In fact, it's not a seek a fight. <laughs> Just show respect and humble to all of you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'm honored beyond the world to receive the 2024 IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change, especially at a time when China and the United States are composing a new chapter in a bilateral relationship. When the opportunity to participate in the journalistic practices in the US IVLP presented itself over a decade ago. It felt like a fate. I had been working in radio journalism, hosting, and production for 15 years, over 10 of them at Radio Beijing. Through the first radio program I founded and hosted in China that focused on studying abroad, I witnessed thousands of students pursuing international education but I never studied abroad myself, and I was eager to up my game. <laughs> Thus, it came to be that in 2013, the AVLP took me to Seattle, Tulsa, Pensacola, New York City, and Washington, D.C., where I met with media, government, NGOs, and regular Americans. The trip broadened my horizons and reshaped my career path in unexpected ways. I was impressed by the digital transformation of print media, the close cooperation between national and the local media. And uh, I think the unique perspectives of ethnic minority journalists in remote towns. The Sunshine Act promoting government transparency. The large number of independent media organizations and the application of new media technology and uh, concepts that combine real-time audio, video, and still image in transformative multimedia products. Outside of the official schedule, I experienced the local culture through my limited English words, but perfect body language. <laughs> I attended a class at the University of Washington and contemplated the Washington Monument and the Vietnam War Memorial by the light of the setting sun did some volunteer work, and even ventured along and against the advice into the world of New York City nighttime street basketball. <laughs> Don't worry, they were very friendly, and I had a blast. Although I know Chinese Kung Fu, <laughs> Tai Chi, I haven't had a chance to show it. If someone needs to warm up, you can come to me later. <laughs> My IVLP experience drove home the importance of cross-culture communication and exchange, inspiring me to create the first public diplomacy, New Media in China, Voice of Diplomacy, in 2014. It has become a preferred program for foreign missions, international organizations, and influential features at Chinese universities. I'm particularly pleased with our poetic spring greetings from Ambassadors Program, now in its eighth year, which to date has featured nearly 100 ambassadors and international organization representatives in China 
reciting poetry in their mother tongue. And uh, I think uh, to greet in the Chinese New Year and welcome the spring through this program. U.S. Ambassador Burns' poetry reading was a breakout hit this year, exceeding one million views and uh, gathering many positive comments on U.S.-China relations. My experience as an IVLP participant more than anything else ignited in me a passion for public diplomacy. In addition to the Voice of Diplomacy platform, I have endeavored to further public diplomacy by funding a scholarship and an internship program called the Future Diplomat Project, which has exposed thousands of talented students, including rural parts of China, to diplomacy through conversations with ambassadors and diplomats and the real world experience. I also have promoted diplomacy, diplomacy through sports, holding a martial arts diplomacy program called Taiji Salon for Global Diplomats that brought Taiji world champions to teach the practice to envoys from 23 countries. I also organized visits for diplomats to the China Open Tennis Tournament. I even attempted culinary diplomacy. I bring top Chinese chefs to teach ambassadors and diplomats Chinese cuisine, while the diplomats in turn shared dishes from their countries. Last year, a decade from my, after my AVLP experience, I had the privilege of participating with four other alumni of various U.S. government-funded programs in a roundtable with Secretary of State Antony Blinken and uh, Ambassador Burns. It energized me to see that Secretary Blinken clearly values the benefits these programs bring to us, the participants as well as the people-to-people -people connections they form. Further inspired by my IVLP volunteer experience, I work with my local community to cultivate a culture of volunteerism. We successfully mobilized the support for earthquake-stricken areas in Turkey and Syria raised nearly one million relief supplies and funds through my media platform and the fund community. I could go on and on about how my IVP experience has strengthened my skills, grow my network, and inspired my ambitions, both in my career and as a volunteer. But already I'm nearly out of time. I will conclude by saying thank you to all dear colleagues at Global Ties. I look forward to working together even more closely now. And thank you especially to my family, my colleagues, and my friends, without whose tireless support I wouldn't be here. With this award and the separation from the conference, I will work to bring more positive change to local Communities, communi communities, particularly provide more opportunities for use in remote areas. My goal is to have even more use participate in public diplomacy and exchange study scholarship programs, giving them the chance to broaden their horizons and contribute to social progress. After all, as former U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt once said, we cannot always build the future for, you, for our use, but we can build our use for the future. Another wise soul, a great philosopher and thinker of ancient China, Lao Tzu, once said, Tian zhi dao, li er bu hai, sheng ren zhi dao, wei er bu zheng. This means the way of heaven 
is to benefit others but not injure. The way of the sage is to act but not compete. Let us then join together to make a benevolent action through the vehicle of global ties to nurture our relationships, transcend borders and barriers, and continue making the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the stage, Honorary Committee Member of the Global Ties U.S. International Alumni Program, Halal Nasser. Good afternoon. I'm Jalal Nasser. I come from Bahrain. It's a 17 hours of flight, and I have five minutes just to complete this speech. <laughs> So, I'm an IVLP of 2013 by Meridian. I visited the DC, and then we went to New Orleans, Portland, and our last destination was Salt Lake City. The theme that I have completed was about American youth inspiring leadership and civic engagement. And I was inspired on the last day of this program to find my national mission. And it states like this since then. I have a brain to develop Bahrain. Now, it's a great opportunity to stand in front of you. And I will echo what Catherine shared earlier. Connect and then lead. That's what we did with Bahrain IVLP Alumni Association, BIVLP. We connected and we started leading together. I'm an honorary committee member for the Global Ties US International Alumni Program and was part of the selection committee for the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. It's an honor to introduce Sochio Sakaguchi, a policy secretary in the House of Representatives, working to promote the advancement of Japanese women in politics. Her 2022 IVLP, Empowering Women's Political Leadership, was programmed by IIE in coordination with World Affairs Council of New Hampshire, World Oregon, and Global Austin. Sechio credits her IVLP for inspiring her work, particularly her experience at the new leadership program at the University of Texas in Austin. In 2023, Sechio received an IVLP Impact Award to conduct a series of workshops to train approximately 200 young woman interested in running for office. Her work to empower women and girls to be active leaders in politics has already resulted in two participants running for local political positions and inspired others to deliver presentations to junior high and high school students. This was an incredibly difficult decision. We were impressed by her groundbreaking work and commitment to helping train and support women running for political office. So, we wanted to recognize her here. Ladies and gentlemen, please watch this short video 
from this remarkable IVLP alumna. Respected members of the Elect Selection Committee, Global Ties US leadership and staff, committee best members, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Tokyo, Japan. My name is Tachio Sakaguchi. First, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for the wonderful opportunity extended to me. I'm very honored to receive such an important award. The honorable mention for the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. I am grateful for the recognition this award brings to my work, and I'm confident that every other nominee was deserving of winning this award as I am. I have been a legislative uh, assistant in the House of Representatives since 2009. Initially, I was working at Mr. Shuhei Kishimoto's office, an ex-member uh, of the House of Representatives and the current governor of, uh, current governor of Wakayama Prefecture. In 2022, I started working for Moto Mr. Motohisa Furukawa, a member of the House of Representatives. Since 2023, I have been a mentor for the Girls Unlimited program, an educational program that inspires uh, middle and high school girls to discover their dreams and goals and shine as themselves. I'm also one of the core members of the Japan Alumni Committee of US Exchange Programs, a committee run by Japanese alumni who have who have uh, participated in the U.S. government-founded programs. During the uh, summer of 2022, I was invited to participate in the IVLP program called Empowering Women's Political Leadership. This program was an extremely valuable opportunity for me to interact directly with female politicians and leaders such as uh, mayors and senators, organizations supporting women's candidacy, and university professor who study women's leadership. I wish to convey my gratitude to them as winning this award would not have been possible without the countless inspiring interaction I had with people throughout this program. Why the percentage of female voters in Japan is high around 50%. The number of female politicians is surprisingly low at below 10% in the House of Representatives. However, the winds of change are now beginning to blow in election and in the political arena. And I want to continue contributing their momentum. For four months, about 200 women participated in four workshops I created using the Ivory LP Impact Awards 2023 grant. These workshops brought together women from all over Japan, young people and people living in rural area alike. And I met with the goals of empowering women who want to make a difference by running for local and national elections and to help them take the first step in the political leadership. During these workshops, I emphasize the importance of women's participation and prospective in decision-making positions. And I did that with the help of many guest speakers from Japanese parliament and advisors from local councils. I'm confident this project could provide the participants with great opportunity for networking and exchange information, and I hope it increase women's interest in politics, especially among Japanese young people. Just as a grain of wheat will soon become a wee field of wheat, I hope that my initiative will take root widely throughout Japan. To the women of Japan, I'm rooting for you. Once again, I sincerely appreciate to this workshop project 
members and staffs of the U.S. Embassy in Japan. Thank you very much to everyone. Arigatou gozaimasu. And now, please welcome back to the stage, Chair of the Global Ties U.S. Board of Directors, Patricia Harrison. Thank you for joining us for this inspiring plenary, and congratulations again to John Ching Chu and Suchio Sakaguchi for the tremendous impact that they have had on their communities in China and Japan, respectively. Next, we invite you to join us for the Global Resource Fair in the Skyview space, which is on the other side of this floor, um, on the other end of the hotel. There you will have an opportunity to meet our sponsors and exhibitors and network with our colleagues. And pro tip, this is also where dessert will be served. So <laughs> another good reason to head over there. The Global Resource Fair will be followed by the afternoon breakout sessions, which will begin at 3.15 p.m. For those of you who are joining us this evening for the Diplomacy in Action receptions, a reminder that we will have a short 30-minute turnaround between the close of those breakout sessions this afternoon and the buses leaving for these events. So please be in the lobby on time for a 5 p.m. departure. Finally, this was a very competitive year for the IVLP Alumni Award for Social Innovation and Change. In addition to Zhang Qing Chu and Su Chiu, the committee wanted to give special recognition to Frey Sangil from the Philippines and Connor Clark from Australia, two remarkable IVLP alumni who recorded remarks that will close this plenary session. Good day, and thank you very much for having me. I am Frey Sangil. I'm a data scientist from the Philippines, and I'm part of the 2022 cohort of the IVLP program, Hidden No More, Empowering Women in Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics, or STEM for short. I am the founder and the current president of Layer Tech Labs Incorporated. It's a research and development company based in the Philippines, but we have a global portfolio, and we have a very strong civic technology and inclusive digitalization program. Now, as for myself, if you look through my school records, I assure you, it's far from glamorous and inspiring. I grew up in the province. I experienced many hardships, um, confinement to certain gender roles, lack of financial capacity. I had very, very slim opportunities. You know, sometimes I feel like I'm playing this game on hard mode. <laughs> And as much as I am very proud that I was able to overcome that, I know that the real step that we have to take right now is to enact systemic reforms and cultural and mindset changes that would help level the playing field for the next generation, for girls, for persons with disabilities, for, for those born in underprivileged communities. Which is why I am very honored and grateful to have been part of the IVLP program. Uh, you know, working on inclusivity with very limited resources and connections, it can feel like an uphill battle. But after meeting my STEM sisters, um, you know, all of a sudden it feels like you've gained amazing and strong and inspiring allies. When, when I was a kid, we didn't have internet back then. I'm sure many of us can relate. Um, I could only read about MIT, about Caltech, about NASA in books and sometimes in TV. So it was like fantasy to me. And when I went to the university, you, you know, YouTube was very new back then and it was very expensive to study AI. So I would go to computer rental shops and download the recorded lectures from MIT OpenCourseWare. I have this small notebook and I would pretend to be a student and participate and answer quizzes. So just imagine how magical and powerful it was for me to be there and have discussions and exchange thoughts with people from these institutions and use their resources. That said, um, right now I am very proud to share that I am actively working with my IVLP sisters and contacts to advance inclusivity in science and technology. The focus of most of our programs is data and digitalization because we are in the digital age where data is the fuel and information communications technology is now deeply embedded in our day-to-day -day lives. And as someone who was able to get her first opportunities through the internet, I can say that 
digital technology, if positioned correctly, can greatly help facilitate inclusion in today's age. With the support of the IVLP Impact Awards, we were able to pilot our Coding Out of Poverty program, wherein girls from rural schools were trained with practical coding and electronics, and we were able to showcase their work in front of potential funders, future employers, their parents, and local government officials. We also continue working with our global partners in advancing inclusive digitalization through software, machine learning, learning programs, and trainings tailor fit to the needs of the marginalized groups. And lastly, we acknowledge the importance of global cooperation and active exchange of knowledge and best practices because it is through collaboration that we can effectively and jointly address the common challenges that we face. We may have different languages, beliefs, we may look different, but at the very core, we all want the same thing. We want development and we face similar challenges which is exactly why we can work on them together. That's what IVLP taught me. Again, thank you very much for having me and a big congratulations to all of us who are actively working to advance inclusion and global cooperation. Mabuhay. Hello, it is my pleasure to be calling in today from Perth, Western Australia. And I'd like to first start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands I'm calling from, the Wajak people of the Noongar Nations and pay my respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. I'm beyond thankful to have received special, re special recognition as part of the celebration of the 2024 Global Ties US IVLP Program Alumni Award, um, especially for social innovation and change. And pass my thanks to the nomination selection committee. They've been beyond helpful in facilitating my engagement in this process. So my name is Connor Clark and I'm a youth advocate from Perth, Western Australia. As a volunteer, I sit on the board of the Australian Institute of International Affairs as the Young Professional Network Convener, where I seek to promote awareness of regional issues, how they affect West Australia, and further seek to support youth engagement in the region. I'm further on the board of the West Australian Japan Society, um, and I'm also passionate about sports diplomacy as a board member of the West Australia Kendo Remai, which is the overseeing board for Kendo Yado and Jodo, and sit on the West Australia Government's Combat Sport Working Group. Professionally, however, I'm a Senior Policy Officer at the WA Department of the Premier and Cabinet in the Native Title Negotiation Team in the Aboriginal Engagement Directorate. In this role, I support the negotiation, implementation, and finalisation of Native Title claims, with these agreements, or these agreements that we're negotiating being some of Australia's largest whole of government agreements with First Nations peoples, to the total of two billion dollars where we're seeking to advance aboriginal social and economic empowerment through promoting genuine partnership and supporting self-determination along with economic empowerment my rvlp experience transparency and accountability in the indo-pacific region was part of a series of projects announced by blinken to support the quadrilateral security dialogue where we had the opportunity to attend with colleagues from india and unfortunately colleagues from japan who caught COVID. This experience, my IVLP experience, radically impacted my life um, and it really contributed to a degree of personal growth, expanded my professional toolkit and created a close network of international peers. I regularly draw strength and inspiration from um, in my professional and volunteering roles. The breadth of people brought together and I guess the closeness of the areas that they work in across the different nations that took part in it was mind blowing and something that I think will continue to stick with me and be a real area where I can look towards for innovation and inspiration in the work that we do in West Australia. Um, through the engaging discussions and the real exposure to the immense amount of reformatory and innovative initiatives throughout the US during the program, I really gained a lot of new insights into different approaches and policy tools for how I can reorient or even revisualize the way I seek to do First Nations engagement in West Australia, along with ways I can support the development of youth in the region through projects with the Australian Institute of International Affairs to draw in um, a greater level of youth engagement to hopefully facilitate their engagement in similar programs in the Indo-Pacific or mo more closely within Southeast Asia. Um, the connections I've made during the RBLP, I'd say especially with the Colorado Indian Commission, have really sort of brought about the importance about how much can be learned through an interjurisdictional approach to First Nation engagement. There's 
an infinite different ways that you can do consultation. And the more that we understand that we're done, the ways that they're done different states and the lessons learned from those experiences, the more we can work towards doing, doing and learning from those potential mistakes, but also the amount of work done to promote First Nations development, we can really take those opportunities and run with them. Um, again, in my volunteer role, I'd say my IVP experience went beyond in inspiring a whole suite of new initiatives to really promote awareness about how youth can promote transparency in the region and how they can reach out and engage a lot more in that space to ensure that there's more a high level of stability within our um, shared oceans. Um, I would say really my IVOP experience was simply transformatory and exceptionally humbling. It expanded my worldview really beyond what I ever thought it would have been. And it really opened my eyes to well the breadth of individuals, incredible individuals and organizations who have continued to be willing to collaborate even a year afterwards. And I think it's really a testament to the power of international collaboration and the exchange of ideas in creating positive change. Thank you. And now, please welcome back to the stage, Chair of the Global Ties U.S. Board of Directors, Patricia Harrison. Hello, so it's me again. Um, so it turns out that the departure time for the receptions is actually 4.45. So the sessions end at 4.30. Uh, please do not pass go, do not collect $200, definitely do not go to your room. Instead, right after the session, please go down to the lobby and we will organize ourselves to get on the buses for the receptions. So thank you again for coming to the, the plenary session and we hope that you enjoy the Global Resource Fair and dessert. <laughs>